In previous videos, we've covered conversion to base 10 from any base and from any base to base 10. In this video, we look at fast ways to convert binary to hex, hex to binary, binary to octal, octal to binary. In addition, we look at octet conversion and network addressing and moving from decimal to binary. The simple truth is to get quicker at this, you'll have to do memorization. The powers of two are fundamental as they keep reoccurring. The numbers 256 or 1024 are values seen in computer graphics, control systems, networking, and almost anything to do with computers. 256 is eight bits or a byte, 1024 is 1K. In the table on the right, the powers of two to the n are tied to binary numbers as they represent the values of each positional place in a binary number. For example, if you're gonna represent 99 things as a number, how many binary digits or bits do you need? The answer is seven because 99 is between two raised to the sixth and two raised to the seventh power and you always take the higher value. If you're doing a binary search of 500 things, the worst case scenario would be nine searches. Why? Because 500 is just below two to the ninth. 50 things would require a binary search of size six. Two to the sixth is 64. Notice in the first table, I don't list octal as this is the same as hexadecimal through the number seven. So if you've learned hex, you know octal. Because binary numbers become so long, hexadecimal is preferred. Octal is not as widely used anymore, but it's still there. When you convert binary to hex um, by when you convert binary to hexadecimal by converting by <clears throat> Well, you could convert binary to hexadecimal by converting binary to base 10 and then back out to hex. There's a much faster technique. Because 16 is two to the fourth power, every four binary digits is equal to one hexadecimal place. So starting at the far right, group the bits by four. If the number of bits is not divisible by four, then the last group will need to be padded with zeros on the far left. All you need to do then is look up the bit pattern for the four binary um, digits and then write their hex equivalent. So 101101 one, one becomes two groups with an, a zero added in the far left. The first group 0101 zero, one, zero, one, is five and 1101 one, 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 is 13, which is a D. In the second example, there are six bits, so we'll need to add two zeros on the far left to make uh, the length of eight. Zero, zero, one, zero is two. Zero, one, one, one is seven. That gives us 27 base 16, which is our answer. Remember it's two seven, not 27. Start grouping from the right and padding on the left or you'll get the wrong answer. To go the other direction, you just simply substitute the four uh, binary digits for the one hex. Just look it up and you're done. It's, it's as quick as that. So 5D becomes look up 5010D1101, and that gives you the answer. A9F, there are three hex digits, so the binary string will be of length 12 four for each place. So just look up an A, a nine, and an F, and you have your answer. It's a similar approach in moving from binary to octal, but eight is two to the third power. So we're gonna do groups of three using the same principle. Start far right, separate the binary groups, binary digits into groups of three, pad with a zero on the left if necessary. 
just look up the tables. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1 becomes three groups, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And you can see that we had to pad with two on the first group. And just do the transfer, 1, 3, 5. So 1, 3, 5, 8. In the second example, again, the number is not divisible by 3. So we'll need to pad with a extra 0 on the far left to get it to be length 9. And we just convert the three groups. 0, 1, 0 is 2. 1, 0, 0, 4. 1, 1, 1 is 7. So the answer is just 2, 4, 7. Base 8. In converting octal to binary, we're going to use groups of three bits equals one octal digit. So you can use the hex to binary table, but the leading zero you'll ignore because we're only interested in the last three bits, not the first bit. So when we have four, seven, base eight, we look up the value for four. So on the hexadecimal, it'll say zero, one, zero, zero, but we're only interested in the last three. So we write a four is one, zero, zero, and a seven as one, one, one. And that's the final answer. Two, five, six, again, we suppress the leading zero on the hex list and just have zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero. And that's our answer. So how about octal to decimal, uh, hexadecimal or hexadecimal to octal? Well, there is no direct technique, okay? Um, they don't align perfectly. So the best approach that you can do is to convert from octal to binary, because that's very quick, and then go from uh, binary back to hexadecimal to do the conversion. So here we go with uh, 2F. So we take from 2F, we just look up the table to get the binary uh, 0010111. And then we rearrange the number of uh, binary places into groups of three. And uh, you'll see that we actually end up with a um, extra, extra place there with the 00. So um, we end up with 5, 7. All right, to go the opposite direction, again, we take it from octal to binary. So seven, four, and then we take it from the binary, regrouping them into groups of four to get back to the hexadecimal value. Networking uses octets or groups of eight bits, IPv4, uses four octets for addresses, masks, and so forth. And we often need to move from decimal to binary in networking. 8-bit uses values from 0 to 55, which is too many to memorize it. So here are two approaches. The first is to convert decimal to hex or octal, and then back out to binary. Because 8 bits is exactly two hex digits, you will only have to do a single division, not two, to get the answer. The reason is to, that the quotient is guaranteed to be less than the base, or 16. So to convert 250 to binary, uh, you first go by way of hex. So 250 divided by 16, the quotient is 15, right? and the remainder will be 10. You don't need to do the second division because again, the quotient will be less than 16 on an 8-bit number. Just don't write down the quotient followed by the remainder. If you use octal, you will have to do two divisions. So for example, if we have the number 194 and we want to write that in binary by way of hex, we would do the division 194 divided by 16 and get the answer C2. And we can write out directly from the table um, the value of C2 is binary 1100, 0010. If you took the value of 86 divided by 
16, you would get uh, 5, 6, and you would just write down those values. All right, so just one simple division, and then you can write it out in hex. The second approach can be do, done in your head with a bit of practice. You just use the powers of 2 and subtract. So you check the decimal number against the powers of 2, beginning at the far left of 128, and work your way down to the far right, which is the 2 to, to the 0 or 1. If the number is greater than or equal to the power, write down a 1 as your answer, and then subtract that power from the number. Otherwise, write down a 0 and just continue working your way from left to right. So let's try it with 194. So the far left place would be as if it was greater than 128. And in our case, it is. So we would write down a 1 and subtract 128. That gives us the value of 66. The next place after 128 is the 64 place. 66 is greater than or equal to 64. So we would write down 1, 1. Then we subtract 66, uh, 64 from 66, and we would get 2. So 2 is less than the next power, which is 32, so we would write a 0. 2 is less than the next one, 16. 2 is less than 8. 2 is less than 4, so we keep writing down the zeros. Finally, we get to the section of the last place. 2 is greater than or equal to 2, so we write down a 2 and we subtract 2 from 2, we get 0, and of course 0 is less than 1, so that's our answer. Okay, we'll try it again with the number 86, converting it to binary. So we start at the far left place, the 128s, and there are no 128s in our number, so we write down a 0. 86 is greater than or equal to 64, so we would mark the second place with a 1. Subtract 64 from 86, and we get 22. The next place is the 30 seconds position, so 22 is less than 32, so we write down a 0. After the 32th place is the 16th place. 22 is greater than or equal to 16, so we record a 1 in its location, and then we subtract 16 from 22. That gives us 6. The next place, 8. 6 is less than 8, so we write a 0. Uh, the next is the 4. 6 is greater than or equal to 4, so we write down a 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. So the 2's place, we mark a 1, subtract 2 from 2, we get 0, and our answer is then 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. The big advantage of this approach over the division is that you can do it in your head with a bit of practice. You just write them out one at a time, just begin at the far left doing that subtraction. So those are several techniques that you can use to speed up your conversions. And particularly for the networking, it's a great saving of time not to have to do all those divisions in order to convert decimal to binary.